Hi everyone, welcome to our final Wonderland session. Crazy, look at this top. Ooh! I am like a living Christmas ornament in this shirt. It is so good. Let's have some more sparkle. You should see the light show that it gives around the room. It's really quite phenomenal. Beautiful stuff. Hi everyone, welcome. It's lovely to see you joining. And so today is our final Wonderland session, which is so crazy. And I've really enjoyed doing these with you guys and just talking to you about the things that I'm learning and the things that I'm trying. And last week was so cool because I asked everybody whether you had tried some of the things that I'd recommended and what progress you'd seen or what changes you'd seen. And the changes were huge and really radical and that's so exciting. There's nothing more stimulating or exciting or encouraging than hearing that the things that I'm recommending are really helping you. So I'm really, really happy to hear that and I love hearing it. So the more of that that you've got to tell me, I mean, who would say no? That would be crazy. So I hope that you all had a lovely Christmas, whether you celebrated or not. If not, I hope you had a fantastic Monday. Hey! <laughs> and um, yeah, so this time, this Wonderland session is all about how to reset your life. Holla, who's in? I'm in. I want to know how to reset my life too. Yes. So that's the thing with 2018 is just around the corner. It's a really exciting time. It's so exciting because there's all this potential, there's all these ideas, there's all these things that you could do with your year. You know, you have 12 months ahead of you and you're like, holy shit, I could make this whatever I wanna make it. And I'm gonna show you some ways that you can make 2018 absolutely amazing. And I am also doing a crowdsourcing episode because I got a lot of questions over Instagram DM, which is kind of like the way to communicate with me these days. I'm always on it. So is everybody else. If you ever have questions about anything or you want me to talk about something, write about something, Instagram DM is the place to be. So I asked yesterday yesterday. I asked people what they wanted me to address and I got some really good suggestions. One of the things we're going to be talking about is comparing yourself to other people. We're also going to be talking about finding love and dating when things feel hopeless and not giving up hope, not losing hope in that situation. We're going to talk about having mood swings and feeling bad for getting thrown out of the vortex and not feeling good about ourselves. And we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions. How does that sound? I think that sounds amazing. I'm really excited. This is like a juicy fucking episode. It's gonna be great. So before we jump into that, I wanna show you something that arrived on Friday. See, I haven't shown it in a Wonderland session yet because it's hot off the presses. The Radical Self Love Almanac is here. It's real, it's beautiful. Look at this unicorn gradient action. Oh yeah, it is so beautiful. And people have been receiving their copies, getting really excited about it. This is a juicy ass workbook to get you super vibed up for 2018. Every month there is stuff about like why it's great to be a Leo and activity lists and worksheets and articles and advice columns. It's really epic. So if you do want this, the link is galadowling.com slash 2018 almanac. And you can always go to galadowling.com slash love if you want like a hot list of all the stuff that's going on. That's where you're really going to get immediate access to everything. So if you've been on the fence about buying this almanac, baby, this is like the coolest gift to give yourself for the new year. So I really do recommend hitting it up. Okay. Are y'all ready for me to answer some questions? I'm ready. I'm ready. I was born ready to answer these questions. Okay. Let's get into it. Also, actually, before we get into it, no. Before we get into it, I wanted to ask whether any of you have been trying these things, just like I asked last week, whether you have tried the feeling good as a priority, sacred morning practice, any of that stuff. Have any of you been experimenting with that? Have you discovered anything? Have you tried anything new? And if so, what's happening? Like, what does it feel like? Is it confusing? Is it difficult? 
Has it changed your relationships? Has it changed your creativity? Has it changed anything for you? Holler at me. I would love to hear if you've like felt a difference or whether you're like not convinced that it will work so you haven't tried it or like hit me with your excuses. What do you have? Anyone? Because I have been working on this every day and I've been doing these Wonderland sessions um, every week for the past six weeks and so I basically learned about this like feeling good as a priority thing the week before I started the Wonderland sessions and so I've been working on it every day and my boyfriend is like I can see the difference in you like you are a completely different person he's really appreciative of the changes and the effort I'm making he can really feel it like it's not just me it's kind of everyone um, can feel the difference. Um, Jen Rose said, I was feeling down on Christmas Eve. I did a meditation to help. That's amazing. Yeah, I really find that doing a little meditation in the morning helps so much. And in fact, I just downloaded an app called Inscape, which is, um, there's a place in New York here where they have this amazing dome, which is like multicolored and you sit inside it and you meditate. And they have an app where they have these like guided meditations. I think it might be like $7 a month or something, but I did one of their meditations this morning, just like lying in my bed and it was really, really good. So if you are looking for a guided meditation app that has lots of options, I really recommend that, it's great. Um, let's see. Die Hexe aus dem Niemensland said, Your tips changed my life, especially the ones about relationships and not making your happiness conditional. Fuck yes. Bobby Devastation said, Instead of the morning, how's your day going? Text with my husband. We do a morning gratitude list text. And it's so amazing. That's awesome. Um, La Fresa Francesca said, I was vibing super high, feeling great. Then bam, super resistance. Is that part of it? Yeah, there's always going to be resistance. There's always going to be stuff that throws you out of feeling good. And the trick is just to get back to it as quickly as possible. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth later on in this episode. But it's a really, really good question. And you are not crazy for feeling that way. You're not the only one. That is totally normal. Um, Darby on Facebook says, When stressed, I remind myself, this is not worth my happiness. Get back into the vortex. Love it. One of the tips that I gave last week was there is no issue worth sacrificing the vortex for. And that is so real. The vortex feels so good and it's so important for us to be there that we really can't put our attention on anything that's making us feel bad or stressing us out. It's not worth it because it doesn't feel good. Um, Alicia said, I'm using these techniques to help with my fear and nervousness about birth. I've got six weeks till my due date. I have seen a huge shift in my confidence about labor now. That's so amazing. Congratulations, Alicia. I'm so excited for you and I'm really happy to hear that. And you know, the best gift that you can give your child as a mother is to be amazingly confident and to be full of love and to be super confident and feeling good and making that your priority. You'll be such an amazing mother if that's where you're at. So congratulations, well done, I'm really proud of you. Um, Claire is saying, hello lovely, I'm just looking to get your new book. It's all about setting yourself up for 2018, right? Yes, it is. It is all about the new year. So every month has its own section with worksheets and articles and things to like just keep you how to celebrate Valentine's Day without losing your complete fucking mind. It's good. It's all about making your year powerful. So like have it on your coffee table next to your file effects or your day planner or whatever you're using and it'll set you up. Okay, so let's talk about some of these questions that I was asked yesterday and we're gonna, we're gonna address these things. So one of the questions that I got, and I get this question all the time, People say to me, what can I do about comparing myself to others? They're like, I do this all the time. I'm constantly comparing myself to other women, especially I look at their relationship or their wardrobe or their body or their career or their home and it makes me feel bad about myself. I feel like I don't measure up. I feel like I'm just a lowly worm on the plate of life and it doesn't feel good. What do I do about that? So here is the thing with comparing ourselves to other people. 
we're really only looking at it from an outside perspective. You know, we're looking at it from this very removed place where we are like living in our own story. We're struggling with our own things. And so what we're seeing of other people isn't really about them at all. We're just projecting our beliefs and our thoughts and our needs onto that person. And you see this a lot with celebrities, right? Like when something happens with Beyonce or Rihanna does something that people don't like, it throws everybody out of whack because we have this intense need for people to be who we need them to be. And that's really intense. And that's why it's so hard for celebrities to just live their lives because they're not just living their life. They are being constantly projected onto by everybody that's watching them. You know, somebody like, for example, when Beyonce released Lemonade, everyone went crazy. They were like, if Beyonce got cheated on, why would anyone be faithful to me? She's like the baddest bitch in the universe. This makes me feel bad. I can't accept that this could have happened. And it was like a huge fireball situation. It was crazy. I don't know if you remember that, but I remember it just being like a massive issue for a lot of people. And so that's what it's about. It's like, even when you're looking at your friend or an acquaintance or a coworker, what we really want is for them to be something that we want them to be. We're never really seeing people objectively and as who they truly are, unless we are in alignment and unless we are in the vortex every day. And you will kind of be able to tell whether you're doing this or not. Because if you are in that place, you won't be tit for tatting with people. You won't be looking at their day-to-day -day behavior so much. It won't really mean as much to you because your true self will see their true self. And you'll recognize that they're a good person and they're doing the best they can. And you never really know the full story about what's going on for them. That's the thing that is so important to know is that we never really know what is going on with someone else. And we also don't know what they are creating in their lives or what kind of stuff they're sorting out or what their childhood was like or where they're going to be in 20 years time. We have no idea. You may be looking at a competitor of yours or a frenemy of yours thinking like, why are they getting all of these things that I want and this doesn't feel good? And like, why does it seem so easy for them? And why does it seem so hard for me? You don't know what's really going on in their day to day life. You don't know what was happening five years ago and you don't know what will be happening in another five years time. They could be anywhere. And one thing that I always love as a concept is if everybody put their piles in a all their, all their <laughs> if everybody put their problems in a big pile in a circle, you would rush to take your problems back. Because truly, the people who seem to have the most amazing lives are struggling with shit. They are being challenged. They are being tested. I don't believe that there is really anybody who has an easy life in terms of like, they have no stuff to sort out, they have no real issues, and life just is smooth sailing all the time. I don't believe it, because I've never seen it. And we really get tripped up by thinking like, oh, well they have plenty of money, like what possible problems could they have? There's so many things that can go wrong in that situation. And you know, it doesn't matter if you have all the money in the world if you don't love yourself if you don't respect yourself, if you feel empty inside, if you don't feel that you're contributing to something greater than you, if you don't feel that you're growing and evolving. Money is not everything. We always think it is until we get some money in the bank and then we're like, oh fuck, I still have to deal with my family shit? Seriously, money does not solve all problems. As much as we like to think that it would because it's really easy to project out and make it one problem. Like, oh, if I had more money, then this would be great. Or if I had a boyfriend, this would be easy. No, it wouldn't. It comes with its own challenges. Everything comes with its own challenges. And the key is to be able to make ourselves feel really good and be in the vortex no matter what is going on around us. 
No matter whether you have a boyfriend or you have $100,000 in the bank or whatever, it doesn't matter. Veronica is saying, when I finally got the job I wanted, I had more money, but I was miserable with my job. Right. And that's not to say that, you know, this, there's always like this tipping of scales and there's always a problem on the other side of an opportunity or something that you really want, because that's not true. But the point is that there's always going to be things that are not perfect in our lives. And we can choose whether to let that completely derail us and make us feel like shit and suffer over it. Or we can choose to enjoy our lives anyway. That's it. That's it. And it's totally up to us. It's completely our choice and it's completely within our control. So when we compare ourselves to other people, the problem with that primarily is that it throws us out of our own alignment with ourselves. So when you're constantly looking at what somebody else is doing, you're not thinking about how you feel. You're not focused on appreciating what's good in your life. You're not meditating. You're not working out. You're not listening to lectures that make you feel good. You're not practicing appreciation. You're not putting yourself in that place where you feel good and feeling good is your priority. Because here's the thing, if feeling good was truly your priority, you wouldn't even allow yourself to go down that track. You wouldn't, because you wouldn't know, hold up, this, doesn't, this isn't gonna feel good, I'm not gonna do this, right? So it's really, this comparison stuff is very tempting, very tempting. We all wanna compare, but we have to like get okay with being ourselves. We have to get okay with loving ourselves and being in our challenges and choosing to feel good no matter what. That's really it. That's really it. The other thing about comparing yourself with other people is that it throws you off your game. It throws you out of pursuing your goals and going for the things that you want and getting excited about your life. So it's okay to look at someone and be like, Man, she's doing some awesome shit. That really motivates me to like do my own thing. I'm gonna close Instagram right now. I'm gonna stop looking at what she's doing and I'm gonna go and make my own thing. That's great. You can use that as fuel if you want to, but don't get trapped in that place of looking and looking and looking and looking and feeling bad and feeling bad and feeling bad. Cause that's no good for you. It's just no good for you. So yeah, giving up this comparison thing, it's really big. It's really big and it's really valuable. So that's comparison in a nutshell. Thank you all so much for your lovely comments about my wig and my top. I don't remember where this top is from, I'm sorry, but it is very ornamenty and I love it. I match my tree, my tree is right next to me. I could like climb inside it and totally be in disguise be like Im Im invisible. Okay. Our next question is about finding love. Oh, such a good question. What do we do when we are single? We're wanting to date. We're feeling a little bit hopeless. It's feeling very challenging. Maybe we have some beliefs about love or romance or being in a relationship that don't feel good. What do we do? fucking fantastic question because this happens to so many of us. So many of us have this conditional idea of happiness that we cannot be truly happy until we are in a relationship. And then what happens? We're not in a relationship, so we're not truly happy. And because we're not in a good place, we're not vibing good, we're not feeling amazing and uplifted, we're not going out into the world feeling amazing and like dressing, getting dressed while we're in the vortex and feeling high on life because we don't feel good about ourselves and we're not vibing it out, we're not radiating it, we're not being our truly luminous selves because that is what we are, then we don't attract anybody. So, one example that I always love to give is that when I met my boyfriend, I was already feeling amazing. 
I was feeling so good. I was newly single. I was seeing this guy who I really liked and who made me laugh and was like really awesome to spend time with and was a fantastic person to be dating for like being back on the dating scene for the first time in six months or six years rather. Like it was really fun. And when I met my boy, my now boyfriend, I wasn't looking for anything. My life was amazing. I was traveling a lot. I was lying in bed. I was listening to all my favorite music. I was decorating my apartment, making it really, really pink because my ex-husband didn't like that shit. And I was like fucking living my life. I was jamming out. I was feeling so good. And I know for a fact that that's how my relationship came to be. If I had been sitting at home, obsessively swiping through Tinder and feeling bad about myself and like never leaving the house and worrying about love and relationships and feeling bummed out, he would never have been attracted to me because it's not an attractive energy. Nobody wants to be with someone who is obsessed with trying to be in a relationship. The pressure is so massive. And even if you think you're disguising all of that stuff, you're not. It's all over you. It's like a stink that just is wafting off you. It is unavoidable. So your vibe is everything. Your vibe is everything. You have to be in a place of feeling really good, which is why, again, I'm going to mention sacred morning practice. It's everything. Shui Sha said, that's exactly how I met my boyfriend, but then as soon as I was in the relationship, I left all self-care and we had the worst, worst relationship ever. Right. So here is the other part of getting into a relationship. Once you're in it, you can't abandon yourself. You cannot abandon your vortex. You have to plug back into it every day. It feels really good to obsess over your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your object of your affection, your crush. It feels amazing. But we cannot forget that the most important thing is that we obsess over ourselves and we get high on our own supply. Because if we stop doing that, then everything becomes about them. And as soon as there's a problem or they do something that we don't like, it completely throws us out of our joy and our happiness. All of our happiness is conditional upon their behavior, what they're doing, where they are, what did they say, what did they do today, did they text me enough times, oh my god, did he like somebody else's Instagram picture, oh my god, right? That's not a place of control, we don't feel good there, we're putting everything on someone else. And it's not this that it doesn't feel good for us, it doesn't feel good for them either. Because what people really want as much as they want to be connected to us and as much as they want to feel loved, they also want to be free. People want to be free. They want to be free to like do whatever they want and not have to take us into account. And we are not their responsibility and we don't feel like their overgrown child that they have to protect and coddle and be careful what, who they, what they say to them all the time because we're so sensitive. It's a lot to put on somebody. Have you ever sat back and thought about the things that you are trying to get out of your partner that are completely crazy? Oh, fuck, there's so much. We really put so much pressure on them to be able to solve every problem we've ever had, to be able to say the exact right thing at the exact right moment. We can't even do that for ourselves reliably. How could we expect a stranger with completely different life experiences to be able to solve every problem, fill every need, and be our emotional, I don't know, safety net every day? It's never going to work. I hate to say it. It's never going to work. It's not going to happen. As long as we keep expecting that of our partners, we are... So fucked. So. We have to maintain those good feelings about ourselves while we're in the relationship. As soon as we get into it, we have to make sure we stay in that place. Put it in your friggin' calendar if you have to. 
if you have to put in like go get a massage go see a friend spend time by yourself today remember the vortex make them alerts on your phone like make them alarms on your phone it's really, really important that you make that a priority. And I'm saying this from a place of personal experience. I got into my relationship with my boyfriend and I was so obsessed with him, I completely lost myself. Again, I do it every time. And then I look around and I'm like, oh, why does everything feel like shit? It feels like shit because you weren't taking care of yourself. Come on now, come on now. I'm 34 years old, it's time to learn the lesson. So I'm saying it to just remind you that we are all capable of forgetting. It's easy to forget, but we can remember. We can remember. Okay, so let's get back to finding love because, you know, we were talking about that and then we kind of got on to like staying good in a relationship. How to find love, 101. There's one thing that you need, and you're not gonna like hearing it, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. This is how you find love. You have to get okay with not having it. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. That's all you need to find love, is to not fucking need it. And that feels so shitty when it's all you want. And it's what you're pining for and you feel desperate for it and you obsess over it and all you want is to like be with someone maybe marry them have a baby build a life but you can't obsess over it you will never find it that way or you will and it won't last or it'll be a mismatch or it'll be an energetic fuck around Bobby Devastation says, met my husband at a time in my life when I just wanted to be single. Yes, when I met my boyfriend, I wanted to be single too. I wasn't looking for some thing where there's now a man living in my very pink apartment with me. No, it was never the plan. I was like, fuck this, I'm never getting married again. I want to be single forever. Please, everyone, just leave me alone. I want to be alone, I want to be alone, I want to be alone, I want to be alone. I was so okay with not having it that it materialized fucking asap a -rooney. That's my new favorite word, asap a -rooney. I also like to say a bowl of asap a soup. It's a fun one to work in there. So you gotta be okay with not having it. You have to be okay with not having it. And the way that you do that, right? The way that you get okay with not having it is by putting as much juice into your own life as possible. Making sure your friendships are really robust, working on your creativity, practicing your spirituality, getting dressed up, going out and living your life, taking those weird ass classes that like nobody else wants to take with you, but you're like, you know what? I wanna learn how to whatever. I wanna learn it. So you go and learn it. And you get so high on your own supply, like I was saying, that you don't need any of that stuff. Sam Jam, oh sorry, Sam I am, 007 said, I forced myself into a relationship that didn't fit. When we broke up, I knew it wasn't a good fit. I moved on and didn't have any expectations. And then I met my fiance. Holla, if you mother fucking hear me. If you have met anyone who's like, I was desperate to be in a relationship and then I walked around a corner and there he was. I will give you $100, I will PayPal it to you. Because that's, that's not real. That's not what it's about. You have to be so into your own shit. When you let go of needing it, that's when it all starts to come together. And that's when it all gets really beautiful. So, yes, put that in your pipe and smoke it up. Okay. So last, no, not last, second to last point is about mood swings. I had a girl send me a message and say, I am loving this, like, um, I'm loving these sessions and I'm really working on being in the vortex and it feels really good when I'm there, but I have a lot of mood swings and it throws me off and then I feel bad about myself and I, 
I like feel guilty for feeling bad and what do I do when I am in that place because it feels like I'm kind of derailing all my progress like I'm, I'm not sure how to deal with this excellent question so one of the quotes that I love and this is from James Altucher who's a friend of mine and I am gonna quote him inaccurately because I don't remember it verbatim but he basically said that the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is the amount of time it takes them to get over a failure or a problem or an issue. So by that he means, and I mean, everyone has things go wrong, things fall off, things don't go the way that you wish they would, we have problems, we have challenges, stuff comes up, right? This is everyone's life. Everyone's life, not just yours. Not just hers, mine too, and that guy, and this dog, we all have challenges. So, the difference between the people who really make their lives into something spectacular and amazing, and the people who just kind of do whatever, is how long it takes them to get back on the horse. So, it could take you a few hours, it could take you a few minutes, it could take you a couple of days, might be a month. Where you're just like dragging your ass, right? But the point is eventually you will get back to that place of feeling good. And if you can remind yourself the value of being there and how good it feels to be there, then you will be able to get back there. So, you know, sometimes it'll take you a day. And sometimes it'll take you a few hours. The last time that I felt like this, I it probably lasted four hours. And it was really challenging. I was crying a lot. I was crying so much that I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna take my makeup off because this is not working for me right now. So I just took it all off. And then I just laid in bed and I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I took a mini nap, which is an amazing way to deal with feeling bad. You like change your momentum. You can like reset your momentum if you take a nap. So if you're feeling shitty, take a nap. It's really helpful. If you can, obviously. And just, like, let it happen. Like, it's okay. I have always found that it's easier for me to feel good and, like, get back into that feeling good place when I'm by myself. When I'm around other people, it is more challenging because I feel bad for feeling bad. And then I feel bad that they're witnessing me feeling bad and I want them to see me in a different way. And so I, like, pile resistance on top of it. It's like uh, Abraham Hicks would say, it's like putting engines on the wrong end of the train. So I find that if I can be by myself, it really helps me get out of that place faster because I'm just kind of able to let it all hang out and like do my thing. It's just easier that way. So allow yourself the time and just get some alone time if you can. But remember that this happens to everyone. We all have mood swings. Honestly, I'm convinced that we all have mood swings. I definitely have mood swings. And I'm not that crazy. I'm a little bit crazy, but I'm not that crazy. And in fact, I'm much more emotionally together than a lot of people. So if I'm like bawling hysterically, what the fuck is everybody else doing? Are they in complete shambles all the time? I feel like they probably are. So my point is that mood swings are normal. We all feel this way. And the only thing to keep in mind is that it just matters that you get back on the horse. And it doesn't really matter how long it takes you to get there. It doesn't. It's okay. You'll get there when you get there. You will get there when you get there. But if you have that solid morning practice and you have these tools, meditation, appreciation and gratitude, exercise, um, listening to lectures, all of those things. If you have those things in your arsenal, you can pick one and commit to it. But the other thing is that sometimes feeling bad about ourselves kind of feels good, right? We kind of enjoy that like wallowing, percolating, being miserable place. And that doesn't make you like goth. <laughs> it just makes you someone who likes to experience the width and breadth of their emotions. And that is okay. It's okay. Bobby Devastation said, I was feeling shitty this morning and I just yelled out, I want to be in the vortex. It definitely helped. Yes, I love saying that out loud. I want to be in the vortex. And as soon as I say it, I almost kind of start laughing. 
Like it happens almost immediately. <laughs> it makes me feel really good. Um, and it just like reminds me of what I want. And then I remember like, I don't have to take all of this shit so seriously. I don't, like, I don't. It's easy. It's easy. Hello, I'm Nikki. Oh, hi, Nikki. Said, I am loving all of this. The holiday season season is so massively stressful at times and I am excited to get back in the vortex. Focus on me, my career, and have that sacred morning time. I love that. And, Nikki, you can be in the vortex right now. Right now! Just start thinking about some stuff that you're grateful for. I sent out an email to my newsletter this morning and I wrote a list of things to be grateful for that everybody can be grateful for. For example, roller skate high heels exist. And so does the color pink. And like if you type drag queen into Spotify, it'll give you the best playlists. Like there is always so much to be grateful for. And as soon as we start appreciating things, we get back there in like three seconds flat. We don't have to chant our way there or sweat our way there or fucking push a boulder up a hill to get there. We can get there in two seconds. It's super, super easy. Okay. Last point, which is a really good one. I had a question from somebody who was asking about, um, what do we do about New Year's resolutions? Like, how do we make resolutions stick? How do we feel good about this? Like, like, is there something we can do to stop these shitty habits? Like, how do we really reset things for the new year and feel really good? Your only resolution really should just be to feel good as often as possible. Feel good as early in the day as possible. So open your eyes and be like, I want to be in the vortex. <laughs> that was like a really intense moment. Ah! Um, so put yourself in that place as soon as you can and stay in it for as long as you can. See if you can hold on to it for a few hours. And then if you get bumped out of it, when you notice it, bring yourself back again. That's it. So easy. That should be your main resolution because when you're feeling good, everything else gets better. Everything else gets easier. You will have the energy to change things. You'll have the energy to feel good, extend yourself, be generous, be creative, be more loving, be more playful. But if you wake up and you don't feel good and you're operating from that place of not feeling good, nothing is really going to be amazing. Everything is going to kind of be like, Ugh, or you're going to have to work really hard for it. And we don't have to work really hard for anything. That's just a belief that we have that like shit's got to be hard in order to really earn it. It's got to be hard. We got to work for it. We got to sweat and toil. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. I believe in feeling good and using that as your inspiration, using that as your springboard to create beautiful things in your life and make your life amazing and magical and special. So on that note, Today, I'm so excited about this. Today, I opened up the Unicorn Cleanse. The Unicorn Cleanse is like these Wonderland sessions, but you get one every day for two weeks, little mini sessions. And every day in your inbox, you get an email from me with a video, an activity, a task to make you feel good. So it's like this, but consistently for two weeks. So we opened up the pre-sale right now. It's special. It's like $44. It's half price until January 1st. And we get started on January 1st. So everyone, we've had so many people sign up already. Everyone is going to start on January 1st. And every day you're going to get an email from me where I tell you to feel good today. I want you to do this. And I'm going to teach you some meditations. You're going to be meditating along with me. You're going to be... Um, doing gratitude with me. You're going to be watching videos like this one and it's all new material. It's so exciting. I'm going to wear a different wig in every video and it's going to really help you get into that place of feeling good and remind you how easy it is and just put you on that track. Like most of us get up and we like scroll through Instagram. We look at our email and we're like, oh, blah, I don't care. But this, the unicorn claims you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, I am on top of this shit and it's all going to be amazing. So good. 
I'm really, really excited about it. I'm just going to put the link here. Meow. That's the link. I'm going to put it here as well. So you can sign up now. And I would also really recommend sharing this with your friends. This is gonna be so much more fun if you're doing this with a friend that you love and you can compare notes and be like, what do you think of that exercise today? Like, here's what I found out. Here's what was challenging for me. Here's what was really good for me. I am basically gonna hold your hand through feeling good every day for two weeks. It's gonna be incredible. So it's the same format for those of you who did Radical Rituals Abundance. It's the same format as that. So an email every day, it's really, really easy. There's not a lot of other stuff, so you don't feel overwhelmed. You can totally deal with one email a day. And it's going to be really good. I'm really excited to get started. Dude. Like, dude. You don't even know. It's really unicorny. I think of the unicorn cleanse as like a juice cleanse for your soul. What could be better than that? Nothing. And it's great too because, you know, I'm practicing all of this stuff along with you and this is a way that I get to be really in it as well and really committed to it and really devoted. And I get to share the things that I'm learning with you. As you can see, I'm learning new things all the time and like practicing these new techniques and I love to share them. And because this is our last Wonderland session, <laughs> oh my god, we've been going for like 40 minutes. Um, because this is our last Wonderland session, I wanted to give you something that you can do and take with you. You'll get an email every day and you can revisit the material whenever you like. So you could do the first two weeks and then be like, you know what, I feel like I need to start this over again. And you can just open the email and go back to it. Super easy. You have the material forever. It's also a really good way to spend your Christmas money if you're like wanting to do something that feels really good for yourself. This is like the best gift that you could give yourself. Well, other than the almanac, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough call. Maybe a bit of both? Maybe? So anyway, galadarling.com slash unicorn cleanse is the link. I would love for you to join us. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for being here for these sessions. I've absolutely loved sharing with you. You guys are so rad and I love your energy. Thank you for all being in this with me. I could not do it without you. Ah. So have an incredible New Year's Eve. Amazing. Sign up for the Unicorn Cleanse and I will see you in your inbox on January 1st. That's Monday, by the way. We got like five days for the end of the year to make it super magical. And we will. All right. Bye.